this is Dan Coyle and you're listening to the B2 Podcast. Hello and welcome to the B2 Football Podcast. I'm Chris Lappin and joining me today I've got Nick Davey. Good evening. The newest member of the Southampton Ultras, Shane Lees. Hello! <laughs> yeah, so Southampton Ultras has uh, not officially taken me in yet. Uh, I've still got to prove that I'm an obscene racist as well as having a skin cut, haircut, so you know. There we go. Listeners love private jokes and things. Yeah, they're just, they're just gonna have to rely on all of the horrible things I've said about the Asians and the, the Africans on this show to understand. And moving on. <laughs> Alright, so tonight we're gonna be picking our 23 for England the next summer. Hooray! Um, we've analysed Hodgson's previous tournament squads, and he tends to pick three keepers, seven defenders, four... <laughs> to be honest, if you listen to match of the day of being so you the only person who wants to take his daddy drink water by the sound of it. four central midfielders, five attacking minded midfielders, straight wingers, and then four strikers. So we keep to that formula. Alright. So, so we have goalies. The debate seems to be whether you take your three best goalkeepers, or do you take your two best goalkeepers plus the younger ones are given some this experience? How do you want to do it? Well, I would, I would personally say take your three best goalkeepers, because I can't think of what young goalkeeper we have right now who would be good enough. I mean, you have to work with a hypothetical situation. If we get two keepers injured, we don't want to be relying on someone who is subpar. The only good... Yeah. Young keeper at the moment I can think of would be maybe Jordan Pickford. Pickford's the one I was thinking of. But I don't think... He, he's not good enough for the England squad. If, if it came down to it, yeah, we'd have to assume that two of our goalkeepers got injured. Would we want him in the, on the team? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not impossible. Remember that Chelsea Reading game? Would, uh, what were the odds of that? Both of them getting kicked in the head. Oh, yeah, no, what, it, it, it can happen. What was that? What was that? What was that? Hmm. happens game one. And, uh, Joe Hart goes down, gets kicked in the head. Butler comes on, gets kicked in the head. And it's like, oh, actually, we picked, we picked Pickford over... Or something like that. I, I think it's no matter where on the pitch, you have to assume whoever you're picking will play. Yeah. And if if yeah. you're looking at them going, they're not going to be good enough to play. You don't pick them. I mean, you can That's say it's, it's, it's good to have tournament experience and all that lot. But if you have no intention of playing them, it's just welcome to the you know welcome to this country, yeah. isn't it? Nice sure and lovely. Bring them along anyway. Yeah, he, yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. He, so you're still taking as not a non-player member, just. For experience. Yeah, they, they, there's, there's no rules that say they can't do that. I mean, hell, they, the teams bring their wives sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say if, if, if they're planning on doing something like that, yeah, okay, take Jordan Pickford along. But apart from that, I can't see that we have, you know, any outstanding young goalkeepers that would be good enough to go straight into that England squad if we needed them. So I'd yes, say pick your friends. Jack best. Butland from the Olympics, where he was like the person on the scene, he's actually, uh, well, when we get in, well, he's actually, could be, he's actually, well, I'd actually go for as our number one, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm a very big fan of Joe Hart. I think he, I think Joe Hart is a very underrated keeper purely because he's English. If his name was, you know, Joseph Hartzer and he was German, people would be saying that he was quality, he was world class. Yeah. He's a very, very solid keeper. Joe Hart. Yes, he sometimes gets a bit larry and all that lot. But honestly, I'd rather have a keeper who was passionate than one who had no passion. And I mean, we have got good keepers. It's like it's the best problem to have. Who do we take? Uh, you know, well, Joe Hart. Got, but, I, think, I, think, I think I think the three keepers actually. Keep it themselves, and I think with goalkeepers, there's not really much of a, the, in my opinion, much of a debate really with the goalkeepers. Well, I think they, we've got three outstanding. Hart, Butland, Foster, Foster, and Heaton. Well, I, yeah, I, and even I think I think it's. I personally wouldn't take Ben Foster because he's been injured for a lot of the season and he is getting on a bit, whereas the other uh, the other three are still fairly young. I wouldn't take Heaton purely because if I'm asking myself who's better, Fraser Forster or Tom Heaton, I'm going to go with Fraser Forster. Yeah. And I think it's a non-contest with him in Butland and Hart. So for me, it's those three. And yeah, yeah. I think uh-huh. Hart has to start. Yeah, I think it's Joe Hart, um, but, but, Butland and Forster without question. Butland and Forster, um, they both had really good seasons. Butland, we've seen them make a save after save after save for Stoke and, and Fraser Forster. It's no coincidence that Southampton's uh, good run of form has happened since he's returned to the side. So mm. it's. Um, I'll take, I'll take a brave man to argue about three keepers. Yeah, I think, yeah, unless you're a really diehard West Brom or Burnley fan, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can't really argue and disagree with those three. But, but what you can argue, though, is who starts, though. You could, you could go, do you go in the safe? Fruit of Joe Hart, consistent enough, played Champions League football many seasons. Uh, he's probably what you would say the England number 
number one. But then would you would you go go on Butland and and um, Forster's a fantastic. Six seasons they've had this year. Well, sometimes I think people are a little bit too enthusiastic to get the you know the incumbent you know striker, goalkeeper, midfielder to to get them out of a team. You, you, we've seen it for a number of years yeah. with Rooney. Sometimes people just want him out of the team because they want someone new in because they think maybe they'll be better. As much as I do think Butland could be the future of England goalkeeping in terms of being number one at the moment. High is what is he twenty eight, twenty nine years old? He's still young for a goalkeeper. Goalkeepers go until they're thirty six or something. Yeah, he's he's still young for a keeper. He's in he's in he is in the form of his life, Joe Hart. He's, he's yeah. in great form this season. He's in as good form as Jack Butland, easily, and Forster. And he is he is probably our, our best naturally gifted goalkeeper. Now, in, in three or four years, and maybe Hart's not doing as well, he's, he's hitting into his early 30s, and that's when you're getting into sort of the peak of your goalkeeping career. And that maybe that's when Butland takes over. But for now, I think people are just a little bit too enthusiastic to see someone new come onto the scene. I, I, I personally think Hart is still quite a, quite a distance better than Butland, and I'd be a lot more comfortable with him in goal been having Butland in goal. Well, so we move on to defenders. Um, how do you want to split it? Do you want to go three full-backs, four centre-backs, with uh, one of the centre-backs being able to fill in at a full back? Or do you want to go yeah, yeah, yeah. special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, we'll go for our definite right-back and left-back. Right. Yeah, and then just a uh, full-back of your choice, really. Uh, well, what do you tend to do? You tend to go with one right-back and two specialist left-backs, and then... One of the centre backs and usually play right back, or usually yeah. have to, this, week, this year we'll have probably Dyer to fill in at right back as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I think the depth of right back for me would be. Um, <laughs> Fine, Walker, Trippier. Oh, yeah, sorry, Klein. Yeah, what about that? Nathaniel Klein, yeah, I think he's the definite right back. Really, yeah. isn't he? Uh, I think oh. he, he's been a great signing for Liverpool. Uh, he was quality for Southampton and Palace, and um, yeah, I, I think he's uh, he's he's definitely. I think he's got the uh, the number two shirt, as you would so to speak, written all over him. I I I probably do agree that he is the best right back we have at the moment, but he hasn't been doing anything particularly special this year. And as much as we could say, okay, yeah, players have off years, Carl Walker's been in great form this season. Yeah. I mean, I know he's been switching in and out with Trippier, but he's been in very, very good form. And I think it, it depends whether or not you're going with the established name or whether or not you're going with the player who can take, you know, the the momentum from his past season with him. And between Klein and Walker, especially look at the, the seasons their teams are having, who would be in a better position mentally to go into a tournament, I'd maybe think Kyle Walker. I think they're probably not too far apart in terms of level of quality, but based on the seasons they're having, I would say probably maybe Walker. Well, I think... I, uh, I do prefer Klein. I, think I, do, I do like Kyle Walker, but yeah, I think Klein's probably just nicked it for me. Tell you what, I, I am saying this. If I was, uh, if he was still at Southampton, <laughs> there'd be no question it should be Klein. But I do think, based on the seasons, because I, I don't think there's too much gap in them in quality, but for me it's just based on the seasons, who who would be in better spirits coming yeah. into it? A, a side, you know, a Liverpool side who, you know, not finished in any kind of European contention, okay. not really done anything... Or Trippier will win the league. Yeah, and if Carl Walker comes in, his side's finished oh, yeah, second or something, then, you know, he's going to come in with great spirits. And I think when you're at a tournament, that sort of thing can make the difference, especially if the level of quality is so marginal. He was all right back at the uh, World Cup. What? Johnson? I think it was Johnson. Yeah, it probably was, wasn't it? I think. <laughs> so, no, I think. Oh, we'll, we'll go with Klein. Uh, all we'll right. Sure. <laughs> um, I left back to assume that Luke Shaw's going to be out still. So. Yeah, it's a shame, that because he was looking at the, uh, well, the left back for England, but it's just yeah, a real yeah. shame. You yeah. can't rush him back yeah. from that. Fitch and Giggs, Baines, Rose, Creswell, Crawford, Jackson. Quite a lot of left backs. Yeah. Oh, I just, uh, I, I know some people really like him because he's a one club player and all this sort of stuff, but Baines is not an England player. He's never, when has no, he I... ever been good enough in an England shirt? Name one great performance <laughs> he did in an England shirt. No, I agree. Name one decent performance he did in an England shirt. He's, he's like Jack Yoker, fantastic club player, great yeah. Premier League player. Every time he's put on that England shirt, he's looked uncomfortable. He hasn't looked for part. Yeah. He's been he's the weak the link. Hey, you you want to see do well, you lovely fella and, uh, and to be fair everybody, he's always quality he takes a naughty free kick and uh, he, he does overall look like a, he's a really good left back he can take a free he's good at set pieces he? and he can take a yeah I think that England has changed said he does look uncomfortable doesn't he really in the World Cup it was, he was very hyped up and he, 
wasn't, he was very underwhelming at the World Cup. So yeah, I wouldn't do Baines, but my, uh, again, my, this is controversial, my, my left back choice would be Kieran Gibbs. Gibbs? Oh! <laughs> I really, really, really rate him. I think he, to be honest, I've, whenever I see him play for England, solid. Arsenal, solid. And I think for, uh, he, I think he'd be fine as a left back. You're doing the same, the same arguments are going on for him then, Bertrand and Rose. Um, I, I, I tell you what, I, I can see where you're coming from, Nick, with Kieran Gibbs. I do think he is quality, and I think he just does need to put Monreal out of the position, and I think he could be a very, very good quality left-back. I just think he isn't playing enough to get into that team. The one thing I would say... Hmm, it's one of those things where I, I wouldn't even include him in the squad, and that isn't, again, because he's a bad player, it's just because at the moment we've got ones who are playing more who are at the same level. Yeah, yeah. I think Danny Rose and probably I, I would go. I'd take Gibbs and Rose as two left backs. I would take. I'm right, Ryan Bertrand. Yeah, I, I, Ryan Bertrand's been pretty good. I would take Rose and Bertrand because left backs are always going to get tired, and you're going to end up using both of them. Ah, it's, it's difficult. Danny Rose hasn't been playing every single game for Spurs. If it, you know, we remember Ben Davis has still been getting quite a lot of games. They've been rotating their fullbacks. And Ryan Bertrand has been playing pretty consistently for Southampton. But I would say that Danny Rose is a slightly better left back. So it's one of those ones. It's, it's again, it's a bit like, um, with the right backs, who's been in the better form over the season versus who's the slightly better one. So yeah. I would, on that basis, I'd have to say I'd pick Ryan Bertrand as my starting left back, but there's so little in it between him and Rose that I, I wouldn't really mind if he didn't get didn't get a nod. Yeah, I think Rose is. Um, well, I think he's probably well sort of done this season, so I, I think um, I think yeah, it's going to be. Um, I think it, I think it'll be Rose and Bertrand. But I wouldn't mind that to see Gibbs, though, because I think he's a really good player and uh, so I would play him a bit more in, in the Premier League. So we've got our full back, so Klein, Bertrand, and Rose. So that's centre back. We can have Smalling, Cahill, Jones, Stones, Jackie Elka, or Dan. I think I've ever tried to figure out what English. Sure, Chris. Scott Dan, Scott Dan, I suppose his name. I mean, his mentions, I have that right in, but yeah, he's known for mention a few times. Yeah, I think if we're taking Scott Dan to the. To the Euros, you know, we might as well just throw in the town now. Good centre back, but I, I fear, I fear it would be a similar situation to what we got with Jaggy Elkin, but he's just not quite cut up for that level. We just put some guarantees in there, so Smalling, Cahill. Smalling and Cahill, yeah, definitely. So Cahill looks like he's going to get the lion's share of games for Chelsea between now and the end of the season because of injuries, and he is a top quality centre back. He's not that old, he's 20, 29, 30, he's about, you know, Prime age for a centre back. Well, I said, I said it was stupid that him and Terry would have been class at the World Cup. Um, so the best centre back pair in, in, in the whole of the, in the whole of Europe, in the whole of the world, probably that in the build up to the World Cup. So it was a shame they couldn't go. But yeah, no, I think Cahill and Smalling are the dead certains, and probably they'll probably be the starting centre backs. I suspect that at the Euros. Tell you what, if we could still, t- if Terry declared himself open for international call up, I'd still take him. I'd put him in that first team. <laughs> 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 was it in 2010 where it was a Hodgson's first tournament? 2012. Is that when he dragged everybody else at the time? Carrigan. I can't, I can't remember. Like I think he definitely took Terry to that. Yeah. He took Terry Carrick, Gerard Lampard. Yeah, Terry's not that old. He's 34, 35, I think. And I mean, you look at like the Italian <laughs> centre backs, they go the on from bloody old. ever. For a centre back, for old, I'd say 36, 37. Yeah. That's when you're on your, you kind of, you should start thinking about retiring. When you're, when you're sort of 33, 34, 35, you're in the sort of, you're at the end of your career, but you're yeah, still, you're still good enough to do a job. It's sort of like, if you're doing it in seasons, that's the autumn of their career. And yeah. they're, they're sort of, very, they're, they're, they're approaching it, but they can still do the job, as John Terry clearly still can for Chelsea. I'd take him if we could, <laughs> but we clearly can't. Um, oh, I was. So, uh, out the last one, Jones. Stones, Jaggy Elkin, is it a chopper? I think he'll take chopper. I think he's well, like chopper. Well, if it was... Like John Stones. Yeah, if it was me, I'd take Stones. I wouldn't take Jaggy Elkin because, I, again, same reason as Baines, I just don't think he's ever done an England shirt. Good player, doesn't really ever do it. I wouldn't take Jones because he hasn't bloody played at all this season. And I'm sorry, if if you if, if it's just qualifying because <clears> you play for United, then piss off. <laughs> uh, and I, I would... I know Shawcross has been injured quite a bit, 
But, yeah. I mean, I'll put it this way. If Shawcross played for Man United, Chelsea, or Man City, and he could play at that level, he would be good enough at that level. He would be in that England team, first team, no questions. So I think definitely we should take him. I'd take Stones um, and Shawcross. Mine would be Stones. Like Stones definitely is number three. Uh, he always had a few cock-ups this season, but I think he's still a quality player, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, but my last one I'd probably go for... Jackie Elk is disappointing when he plays for England. I still think he's a good player. Um, but my last one will probably be, I don't know, Chris, you go for me. Yeah, I, I, I like Shawcross, I think. He should yeah, be. Shawcross is probably... Uh, right. who, who here would argue, let's, let's say uh, Man City, who here would argue that if Shawcross wasn't in that Man City team, he wouldn't be in the England squad? Uh-huh. Oh, of course he would. He, he, he would start in that Man City team. You put him alongside company. I see. This is one of those things that maddens me because he's he's. I think he's twenty seven or twenty eight. He's younger he than the likes of. Yeah, he's only yeah. a bit older than the likes of Chris Smalling, who we're talking about as being you know an outstanding centre back. If he was playing for a big side, he would be getting in this team no questions because he plays for Stoke. Very superior, so he looks a bit focused, doesn't he? Well, yeah, and there is that whole sort of. England try to have that whole, we've got to look good in our England kit and our England suits yeah. and we've got to be twats and all that sort of stuff. And that, that's not pissing me off because you can tell they genuinely do think about it. It's why yeah. we put an absolute knobhead like Greg Dyke in charge of the FA because he's uh. good at talking. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that does annoy me and I think there is, a, there is a point to it. But I think if he was playing for a big side, no question he gets in that team and it's the same player no matter who he plays for. Yeah. I can't understand that one. I don't think he'll get good up, but I think he certainly should do. Who, uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably, do, I'd probably do him as well as his fourth choice centre back. Either him or Phil Jones. So we'll go on to our quiz. Hey. We'll take it up a bit. We'll, we'll finish the defensive side. So. Right, so this week I'm going to test your knowledge of past England squads. Um, I've got a long, qu- long question. Respect how young we are. <laughs> I've got one question for every squad going back to 1990. For extra spice, I thought I'd let you pick each other's years. Okay. What? So there's three answers for each question. I'll give you a point for each one you get correct. So Nick, do you want to pick a year between 1990 and 2014? Oh, is it through World Cup squads? It's all, it's all tournament squads. Uh, yeah, do 1990. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. Right. Name players, name the three players named Steve in the 1990 World Cup squad. I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Three, no. I had to go through the squad and find something that was a freak and all that. Oh, okay. Uh, I did not expect that. Um, <laughs> was he around at that time? Uh, Steve McManaman? Just say three names and I'll tell you at the end. Okay, uh, Steve McMahon... No, it's not... Mc... I don't know how you pronounce it. It's like Mayan. Steve McMahon. I don't know how you say oh. that one. McMahon. Yeah, McMahon. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Uh, what am I called, Pike? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the Forest guy, Steve Hodge, and I don't know the last one, so I'm going to go Stephen Taylor. <laughs> Two. So Steve Hodge, Steve McMahon, and ah, okay. Steve Bull. Ah, oh, Wolves, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was playing outside the top of the division. Ah, I don't know why I said Stephen Taylor. I don't even know if Stephen Taylor is a footballer. It just it seemed like a good guess. <laughs> Got to pick a year for me. Um, was would nineteen ninety two be one? Yeah. There we go. Enjoy. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Name the three that were Palace players in the Euro nineteen ninety two squad. What? <laughs> Get shafted. <laughs> What is your favourite uh, person in the world? Des Walker. Des Walker. Ah, oh, he's correct. Name three people. I just guess because I know he used to play for England, I know his son. I know he used to play for Forest, so yeah. Just put two and two together. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be three names, Tom. So Des Walker's correct, right? I'll tell you when you put me three names. Oh, I'm with it. Des Walker, um. 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 <laughs> Darren Anderson, Timmy <laughs> Payton, um, and um, um, um <laughs> Stuart Pearce. That's two. Oh, Stuart Pearce, Des Walker, Nigel Clough. 
God. Uh. I just can't find it. Just no, I, I, I was thinking it, but I was like, oh, he didn't play football, did he? <laughs> is it just me, though? Is, whenever anyone says Darren Anderton, does anyone else just instantly think of a cricket player? No. Atherton. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, for some reason, it always just makes me think, isn't he a cricket player? No. No, yeah. I, I know he's not. <laughs> just... I think I'm Michael Atherton. I've got to pick a year for two. Uh, 1994 is obviously not one, is it? Uh, so we'll have 1996, please. Cheers, man. Cheers. Name, name the free 21-year-olds in the whole 96 one. Are you, are you, uh, are you, well, okay, you're a dick. Um, free 21-year-olds, um, 1996, I just gotta, yeah. oh. <laughs> We're all pretty legendary players. Okay, um, Robbie Fowler was one. The Neville brothers were called up and, Oh, which one would it have been? I'm going to go Gary Neville. I think he would have been quite young then. And I think the other one might have been Sol Campbell. Yes, Oh, okay. Oh, that wasn't too hard. <laughs> so I was thinking, Phil Neville, it, one of the two, one of them was 19, and one Phil of them Neville was 20. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whew. Okay. That's a bigger year for okay. Um, would 2004 be one? 2004, yeah. That's a uh, curveball. <laughs> So name, name the three players born in 1975 and then 2004. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> three players? Yeah. Born in 1975. Yeah. So, I got 2,004 euros. That would make them 84. 2005, so that would make them 29. Um, crikey, um... <laughs> well, obviously, there's not one. Um, Lampard was probably a bit too young then, um... We'll go for David James. Um, David James is one. Um, Twenty-nine. Um, bold, very bold. Jamie Carragher. Bit too young for that. Um, and uh, and. Um, um, David Bet no, um, no, um, oh yeah, okay, um, um, um Paul Scholes, no, zero. Oh, I was thinking, two thousand four. That's twelve years ago. Some of the players you were naming must be in their fifties now. Yeah, Gary Neville, David Beckham, and Nicky Boss. Oh, fair enough. You almost got one of them. You almost said oh, Beckham. Beckham was right. Yeah. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah, for... Yeah, 98, 2000, 2002, 6, 10, 14, 12. I tried <laughs> to be nice to you, Nick. Also, <laughs> um, at the end, 1998. 1998, okay. Yeah. Okay, name the three most capped outfield players in the 1998 World Cup score. Holy shit, because I actually know quite a lot about the 1998 World Cup. Because I obviously I actually studied it, but shit. <laughs> That's like being asked to name the fucking Steves. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Um, so it's outfield players. So Steve was the most cut player. Oh, oh. I, I genuinely haven't got a clue. I mean, at this point, oh my god, um, David me. David Seaman, David Seaman, I'll put no, him in there. Outfield players. Oh, fuck, fuck you. <laughs> I, I wasn't properly listening. I was thinking. Um, I'm just trying to think of who was old. Who was old? Um, okay, Martin Keown, Tony Adams, Teddy Sheringham. One. Ah, it's a good punt. Yeah, Tony Adams falling. I'm sure it was worth a punt. That wasn't bad. Got one. Bloody hell. Uh, every year for me. Um, we've got 2006 available. Yep. There we go, I'll give him 2006. Uh, name the three goalkeepers in the 2006 World Cup squad. Oh, Doddle. Oh, I'm not going to get this. Paul Robinson. Yep. Um, no, he was definitely one. Um, would David James have gone? Um, well, we're definitely going to Paul Robinson, obviously. Um, who else is pushing him? Uh, Scott Carson. 
and yeah, Robinson Carson. Uh, um, yeah, fuck it. We'll go David James as well. I was going to say so. Three for three. Really? Yeah. Well, I know because Scott Carson started playing a fair bit after the World Cup, but and then he obviously fucked up against um, Croatia. Yeah. So I've just handed you one now. You want to? You want to give me a good one? <laughs> Okay, I'll be nice. 2002. That's kind of nice. I could have given you 2000, so I'll give you 2002. Yes. Name the three Leeds United players in the 2002 World Cup slot. Oh, I'd love this one, actually. I can only name them. I've named two at least. I don't love it. Oh, Christ. That's well, taken just... you back a while. Leeds. Yep. Back yep. when Leeds were alright. Yeah. Well, Leeds were the Champions League. I know, I know two, actually. Oh, Christ. Um... I've got three, actually. I know all three. Oh, um, Jesus. I'm starting to think of, like, Irish players, which isn't really <laughs> helping me. Um, okay, uh, Rio Ferdinand, he definitely was in there. Danny Mills was... Ah, for the life of me, I can't think of who the last one was. Um... No, that was West Ham. Um, shit. Give up. I could say Robbie Bloody Keane, but that wouldn't help anything. <laughs> ah, Christ. Um, I don't know. Um, I swear it was a keeper. I don't know. Uh, Wes Brown, maybe he once played for him. No, he got, he got Rio Fernand and Danny Mills. Um, Nigel Martin. Oh, Oh, it was a keeper, wasn't it? Shit. I knew that. <laughs> okay. Okay, for... Do you need to know which one's left? Yeah, what, what years have I got left? Well, uh, 2000, 2012, 2010, 2013. And I go 2000. I reckon that's a tough one. Oh, you cock. <laughs> <laughs> Name the three players that were under 21 in the 2000 year Oh, for God's sake. I can give you a clue, it's not Adam Lalana. <laughs> I think I know who one of them is actually. I reckon Gerard's one. I reckon Gerard, um I'll go Gerard, I'll go um <laughs> David Ch David Ch James and um Gerard James and um, Shoulder and no. <laughs> um, <laughs> James um, and um, um, Michael, and Michael Owen. Two. Oh. Owen Gerard and. Barry. I was thinking it's got to be Barry because he he's so what again, 36, 37 yeah, now it was Barry wasn't it yeah. Yeah. so going into last question Shane has 8 and Nick has 7 so. oh so you've got um, 2012 no 10, 12 or 14 10, 12 or 14 um, 12 12 yeah. they the three Man City players in the 2012 World Cup Alright, okay. 2012. Which... When did we go out in 2012? Uh, Italy on penalties, wasn't it? That was it. I, remember, I was in the pub for that. Yeah, um, it was my first time getting battered. You know, if he does, that's my birthday. <laughs> okay, uh, three Man City players. Yeah. It's got to be Joe Hart, obviously. Joe Hart's one of them. Um, was he there at the time? Actually, no, I know this. This is easy. Joe Hart, Lescott, and Milner. Yes. Yeah. Richards on the stand up, standby squad that defined it, if I remember right. <laughs> uh, so, Shane, what do you want your last question? It's one? Yeah. Uh, possible for me to get four, isn't it? But yeah, give it anyway. I'd give him 2014. Yeah, so name the three Addison players in the 2014 World Cup. Um, Jaggy Baines, and was it Stones? Um, no, right, Barkley. Barkley, yeah. Um, uh, oh, oh, how, how about this? Can I have 2010? 
<laughs> just yeah, just have an extra round. <laughs> you can have, you can have well, a guess. Well, if I have that, we split. So I get one, I, I'll give it to Shane, and then. All right, all right, yeah, go for it, go for it. All right, so name, name, so take it in turns. Name the three Liverpool players in the 2010 World Cup. Um. Okay. I'll. In the 2010 World Cup, number one, uh, Gerard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we're playing again. Oh, shit, actually. <laughs> um, Peter Crouch? No. Nope. He was in there, though. He played for Liverpool. Nick? Uh, so, who, who, what was that? So, I was miles away then. <laughs> um, what did you say, mate? I said Crouch. He was at fucking... Oh, no, I know who he was at. He was at Spurs. Yeah, he was at Spurs. I'm a few years off. 2006, was it? Was Glenn, was Glenn Johnson Liverpool then? Um, yeah, Glenn Johnson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to draw. Carragher. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, well. Brilliant. I, I already won. Why did I agree? <laughs> what was I doing? Uh, congratulations to you both. <laughs> Damn. Alright, so um, we'll move on to the strikers. Strikers? So, who do you think should join Rooney up front? Rooney is going to go the case. So, how many strikers are we doing? Three join the Rooney. So, this should be four. So, four so, strikers. Four strikers. Four out of strikers, so I reckon we'll cost them. Sterling would go into the attack of the field of strength wingers. So it's okay. So like Cade, Vardy, Welder, Austin, Carroll, Ings. Yeah. Oh, I'd say what, if it was me, I don't know, I'm going to have a few people disagree with me. I'd take, obviously, Rooney. I'd maybe rather not take him a little bit, but I would take him. Take Harry Kane, Jamie Vardy, and the last one's going to be a difficult one, but I would take Danny Welbeck. Because I think he adds something to that squad that we otherwise wouldn't have. And I think yeah. you, you can bring Sturridge if you want, it's but Sturridge. he's the same kind of player as Kane. There's a lot of people who say, yeah, they have a different build, you know, Kane's a little bit taller and all that sort of stuff. But in the end, they both have the same kind of movement. Danny Welbeck gives you a completely different option up front. He gives you a genuine runner, a bit a bit like what Vardy does, but whereas Vardy is a speed runner, Welbeck has a lot of power, he has a lot of ability to hold off the play. I think it gives you something different. And he's he's come back into the Arsenal team and he's looking quality. He's, he's looking really, really good. And when you look at the other strikers, you're, you're picking someone who's been injured a lot. And I think of, of all of them, Danny Welbeck gives you the most we otherwise wouldn't have. Do you know, my, my, uh, I'm going to have a very controversial one of mine as well. I'd go for um, Rooney, uh, Kane Vardy, yeah. and the last one, uh, Andy Carroll. Well, that is straight out of there. Wow. Carroll. Uh, sorry. Uh, he's go route one with him. Go route one with him, and he'll always win the headers. Uh, whenever he puts on English shirt, he seems to do absolutely fine. So uh, I tell you, if I was going to go that route, and and you know, you want someone who's going to be big who's going to win the headers, I'd go with Troy Deeney over Carroll. Yeah, Troy Deeney's on my list. Of this, this list. The foe as well. He scored. I think he's the highest scoring Englishman in the season. Well, I'd love yeah. to see him go, but he's not going to. So I'm not going to bother going down that route. <laughs> yeah, he, he's good, Defoe, and it'd be good to have coming off the bench. But yeah, yeah it's, it's one of his, done it as well. It's one of those situations. You've only got four options. You have to take Rooney because he's the captain. You have to take Kane because he's outstanding. You have to take Vardy because of the season he's had. You've got one more space. You bring yeah. in Defoe, and you're bringing in just another goal scorer, which is exactly what Rooney is, exactly what Kane is. If you take you take well back, you can play off the left as well. All right. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's quite open, that fourth Still, spot. Really I think those, those first three, Rooney, Kane and Vardy, are the ones that are definitely going to be going. Yeah. It, it, it depends what you want. If you want something that's going to give you something you don't have, I'd go for Welbeck, because he also provides versatility. But if I was if you, if you I was going to go Nick's route and say, let's have a big man to throw up front, I'd go with Deeney over Carroll, because he's had a better season. Okay. I'd go for Welbeck that man Welbs <laughs> I mean obviously the thing about Welbeck as well is he's never had a bad game in an England shirt I, I genuinely it's, it's, it's the total opposite of the likes of Baines and Jagielka where they're good players who can't do an England shirt 
Welbeck's a, a decent player, a, a fairly good standard player, who just seems to up his game the second he puts on that shirt. I think that's exactly the kind of player you want at a tournament. I mean, I, can anyone genuinely tell me the last time Welbeck had a bad game for England? No. He just doesn't. He, he goes on there and he, he gives you the 8 out of 10 every single time. He doesn't always score, he doesn't always get assists, but he gives you the work rate, he holds the ball up, he does all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I, I personally would take Welbeck still, even though we've had, you know, Troy Deeney had a great season, Barahino's yeah. getting back into it, Defoe's had a great season. I would take Welbeck. You agree there? Um, I have to see if... <laughs> yeah, no, I think I should do, yeah. Alright, so should we move on to attacking midfielders? So we've got Barkley, Sterling, Lingard, Lallana, How many are we picking? Townsend, five. Young, or Brighton, Zaha, Antonio, it's <laughs> Um, well, I feel I can do it. Can I go first on my phone? Go for it. Barkley, Alley. Yeah. Sterling. Um, Barkley, Alley, Sterling. Antonio, and, um. I wanted to put Antonio I like that. I think it's good. Well, he's. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. Um, but I'm telling you, I forgot, I actually said that the last one. I'm just going in between. Um, yeah, I think my last one would probably be Milner. I, I personally wouldn't put Milner as an attacking mid. I wouldn't put him as an attacking mid. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he's more of a centre mid. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Instead of Milner, then I'll um, go for. Um, so I've got Ali, Barkley, uh, Sterling. Uh, Antonio and I'll go for um, Lalana. Yeah, Lalana. And Lalana can eat shit and die. I t- <laughs> so I agree with your first four there. I think if Antonio can keep up the kind of form he's in between now and the end of the season, the only reason he wouldn't get a call up is because he's a West Ham player. I think he's been quality. He's a, he's a winger who plays like a striker who can also throw in the tackles. He's he's a quality player. For me, the other one I would put in there would be Albrighton because again, it's a situation of he's in great form. He's yeah. going to be absolutely buzzing at the end of this year because it doesn't matter where Leicester finish now. They're going to get top four. I mean, they're, they're going to be on top of the world, so I'd definitely take Albrighton. And again, it's a situation he offers you something we don't have, which would be an out-and-out winger. If, we need to, if we're in a game and we're thinking we need to start getting balls in the box, we put an out-and-out winger to genuinely run the ball down the line and put it in the middle. That's the yeah. one thing we, we might need because you're not going to get that from Sterling. He likes to come inside. He doesn't like to go out and put crosses in. You're not going to get that from Barkley. You're not going to get that from Ali. You're not going to get that from any of those players. Albrighton's the only one who could offer that. And so on that basis, I'd bring him in. Um, would you consider Walcott? Walcott. Yeah. Oh, what season is he at, though? Uh, I li- I I like Walcott. I do. I I like that. You know, he came from Summerton's Academy. I like all that. But what's he done lately? No, hey. don't yeah. take him. Punch off. Hunt you down. <laughs> I I I do like the old racing because based on the other players we've got, they're all kind of. Like, uh, Barkley and Ali are both central. Yeah, Kyle, I'll go for the right. This is the guy says the fifth one that I didn't really want to say. Um, yeah, Lallana. Yeah, I'll do, um, Walcott. I said Lallana. Uh, no, seriously, though, about Walcott. <laughs> like, I hate to sound like Paul Merson just having a go on, you know, Soccer Saturday, but well, he's been injured for a lot of this year. He's been injured yeah. for a lot of every single bloody year. And what's he done in the last two, three years? He had a decent... Oh, I don't forget he scored a hat against Croatia. Yeah, he had a, he had a decent bit where oh. he was scoring some goals. And may- oh. maybe if he was getting regular game time as a striker, we could take him as a striker. Maybe. But what's he, what's he done? He hasn't done anything. He's a good player, no question about it, but you can't just take him because he's a good player. Otherwise, let's take Jack Wilshire with his broken legs. <laughs> uh, it's just, he hasn't done anything of note this year, or yeah. probably last year, or the year before, if we're really going far enough, or mostly in most of his career, if we're kind of being quite harsh. I, I just don't get the whole thing about Theo Walcott. It's one of those ones where he had great potential once, yeah. but it's just, it's never materialised, and at the age he is now, it probably won't ever, ever come about. If we go to central mids, we have Eric Dyer, Henderson, the favourite Wiltshire reason. <laughs> Cleverly, Ryan Mason, Shelby, Delph, Carrick, Milner, Oxley Chamberlain, Drink Water. I think I, I put Noble, but I kind of just missed Noble. Which is really. how, many, how many are we picking? We've got four spaces left. Um, I was going to go for Eric Deer. Yeah. Um, 
Danny Drinkwater. Yep. Um, Jordan, uh, Jordan Anderson, maybe. And, um, no, I'd rather he play that wide. No, I'll take Chamberlain and show the wide. Uh, yeah, not say Chamberlain. Yeah, I, I'd have to go with <coughs> drink water. Uh, definitely bring in Milner. Milner's had a very good season. Eric yeah, did. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, Dyer, Milner. God, it's hard to remember who I've said. <laughs> Dyer, Milner, drink water, and to be open, I don't know. I, Henderson's good. I, I don't think there's any question about it. Can, can you go? Can you go from the cover of FIFA to not being in this? Well, yes, if you don't do anything, <laughs> it's it's again a case. Of, it's a bit like Walcott, where you sort of, if, if you're trying to look back at what what's happened in this season and Jordan yeah. Henderson's year, he's been Liverpool captain, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, he's he's had Jurgen Klopp come in. He, he's now his manager. Uh, can we think of a single remarkable or even notable moment involving Jordan Henderson this year? Just one, one good pass. I'll take. <laughs> I, I I just can't. It's, it's sort of like if we bring in Jordan Henderson, we're bringing him in because his name is Jordan Henderson. And he plays for Liverpool, and yeah. as much as he's been decent, we've got other players who have been better. It is difficult because there's there's not that many other you know younger players to bring in aside from Jordan Henderson apart from maybe Shelby who despite Newcastle's woes has had a good season. Yeah. I don't know if if we were going to go over young oh, if we were going to go over young player if we were if we if we wanted to go in that route I'd say bring in James Ward Prowse because he's the only oh. other remarkable. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's the only, he's the only other remarkable no. young centre mid. Or I would say if we're not going to go over young player if we just want a good player bring in Carrick. So those would be my my two. It's so it depends which uh, way we're going. Personally, out, but it's quite old. Quite yeah, he, he is thirty three or thirty four now. So, but no, personally, I'd go with because he's had such an unremarkable season. James Ward Prowse, just because I always favour bringing in the younger players. But if we, if we brought in Carrick instead, yeah. it'd be fine. I I don't get the hype about Jordan Henson. It's the whole he's meant to be Gerrard's heir thing, but he doesn't play a single bit like Steven Gerrard's ever played. And it's just he's at Liverpool. That's genuinely it. He's at Liverpool and he's a midfielder. He hasn't done anything this season whatsoever. Yeah. So I, I genuinely don't. So for me, if I was if I was naming that central midfield right now, Danny Drinkwater would be absolutely. Nailed on for being in that first eleven. Yeah, I'd I'd put Danny Drinkwater and I put Drinkwater and Milner. That would be my starting central mid pairing. Because there you've got all the industry and all the creativity you're going to need. Has Danny Drinkwater though? Has has Henderson been better than Drinkwater this season? Has he been better than Milner? At, at, at his own club com- comparison has he been has he been better than Carrick he hasn't been better than James Ward Prowse and James Ward Prowse has had an average season and he's 21 years old yeah, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of those situations where it's again like Walker he's got the big name he's got the whole yeah. link of having all that potential so we go oh we should take him but I genuinely apart from that the whole reputation thing which every England fan is saying we don't want to pick our team based on apart from that I can't think of a single thing that he's done that would merit him being in the England squad this year Am I, am I being harsh? I feel like I might be being harsh, but I genuinely... Because, of course, you can't judge a player entirely on a year. You have to do more yeah. of their career. And, of course, he's had a good career. If you're a professional footballer and you've reached that level, you know, well done, you've, you've done it. I'm but not going to argue if not put me at Liverpool <laughs> I, I, I just can't think of, for this year, with the players we've had who have, you know, come through and done so well, yeah. why we bring Henderson in. And if... Because this is what I know. If we brought Henderson into that squad, he would be in the first team. And all of a sudden, we're cutting out drink water, we're cutting out Milner, we're probably cutting out drink water, despite the fact he's had an incredible season, an absolutely outstanding season. And I just think, at that point, we're just making the same old England mistakes over and over again. We're not learning our lesson one little bit. So, I personally wouldn't put him in the team. I can think of two players who should go in ahead of him, and that would be Carrick and that would be Ward Prowse. Also, then, too, I'll take Carrick because it'd be a very inexperienced such a midfield and we just put Will Prowse in there as well. Yeah, prop, prop, yeah. I think that guy has only played twice. Or yeah, like I said, it's, it's on the basis of do you take the experience of the young player? I think either of them could have a good shout. Probably Carrick could be the, the wiser option. 
Uh, it does annoy me sometimes of English. I like how we've not mentioned Wilshire. Thank God we haven't mentioned Wilshire because he is cack. He is cack. He is utter crap. I don't know how. I know. I know there's going to be Arsenal fans. Your pants last week. I, I know there's going to be Arsenal fans who are like, oh, but if he's fit, he's like one of our most talented centre mids. Yeah, if he's fit and not smoking and drinking and generally being a fucking lout. Then yeah, maybe he maybe he might be worth a call up. Apart from that, he's not a fucking professional footballer in the slightest. He just occasionally goes out into a pitch with some other professional footballers, kicks the ball out, shouts at the referee, gets sent off, and then gets injured all at the same time. Just literally, just go off and retire, Wilshire. Do a, do a Hargreaves, but give up and don't release the cool training video. Well, job is getting to smart and then you can sell. He won't be for this. Should be the worthless. Sure. So the keepers were gone for Hart, Butland, and Forster. They were gone for Clyde, Bertram, Rose, Stones. But Danny Drew was it though? Kay Hill and Shawcross. And Smalling, so. Yeah, midfield, they were gone for Eckbeer, Milner, Carrick, and Porter. Attacking mids were gone for Barkley, Sterling, Deli Alley, Albright, and Antonio. And up front were gone for Rooney, Kane, Hardy, and Melbourne. It's one of his ones, it reads out like a very, very, very bad England team. <laughs> but at the same time, it probably is actually our best England team. So I don't yeah. know if, if I'm just being negative about our overall calibre of players, or if it's maybe just because, again, they have the, the small names quite... at the small clubs, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm being a bit harsh. If you look at the World Cup in 2018, I think that's quite exciting. Oh yeah, we've got like, plenty of good young players. It's the first time in quite a while we've had a lot of young players who we think genuinely could come through and do quite well. I mean, you even look at the likes of Shelby. He's twenty three or something. You think in a few years' time he could he could be quality with his with his technique. So yes, it's, it's now good. He's, now he's gonna have rap with the he says up as his possible. Uh, it's, it's it's good news for the future. At this current tournament, though, it's one of those ones that's either going to go remarkably well, considering yeah. the, the players we're bringing, you know, a lot of inexperienced players, or it's going to be one of our worst tournaments in history. I don't see anything in between those two. I don't see us having an average tournament, you know, reaching the knockout rounds and then going out to a decent team. I don't see us doing that. <laughs> I see us being cack and struggling to even beat Slovenia, or, or we actually surprise everyone, smash Wales to pieces, smash Russia to pieces, probably some reason draw with Slovenia, do a do decently in the knockout round and then get knocked out by a good team. <laughs> get a help hey, so like you did for the under twenty ones last sort of. Yeah. Oh god, that was absolutely diabolical. I watched that as well. Yeah. Is there anything else? Do you want to speak about to do with this? Um my... uh, if I was gonna say something, I'd say honourable mention to Gareth Barry, who can't get into the England team despite the fact he is very, very good. This is I'd say honourable mention Noble as well. Yeah, Noble. Look, we've got a lot of good central midfielders. I, I personally would probably even put them to. <laughs> even put them to ahead of Henderson. And yeah. this isn't just me being anti Liverpool because I've included James Milner in my first team. You know, and Klein's in there as well. It's nothing to do with me being anti Liverpool. I just think. Henderson doesn't merit a place. We have got good something to The problem is we've got very young, inexperienced ones. We've got very old ones, the likes of Carrick and Barry. So we're stuck in a difficult position. So obviously everyone looks at Jordan Henderson and goes, he's 25, 26 now. Well, shouldn't he just be in there because of that? And just, no. Adam Lallana can piss off as well. I genuinely do just hate him. I hate him, but he's been crap for Liverpool, so I don't see why he would get a place. Sod off. There was, an, there was an argument about that two weeks ago. Rashford should go. No, three games cannot get you into the England squad. I've no chance. Oh, that was my argument for Dele Alli at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Dele Alli has gone on to prove he's been amazing. If we're talking, yeah. if we're talking about him being that good straight away with Rashford, that's ridiculous. Dele Alli's proved himself now. There was questions at the start, but he's proved himself. Rashford, he still needs definitely more with, time to with, prove himself. With Rashford and- Pickford, I'd probably take them along as just yeah, honor- honourable guests. Yeah. It's like if we're, if we're thinking about taking Rashford, then I'm going to have to press home the James Ward Prowse thing all day long because he's been in the Premier League for three seasons now, playing, yeah. and he's been very good. He's been a lot better than a lot lot more of us in him. Is if we're saying Rashford's in, then James Ward Prowse is bona fide first team by that standard, and he definitely isn't. <laughs> so it's, it's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Two, if he was playing for Swansea, no one would give a shit. No one would give the slightest, tiniest, wettest shits 
It's because he's a Man United player. And as much as I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, if you're coming out of a United Academy and doing well, yes, brilliant, fantastic. I hope he's an amazing player. But if he wasn't a Man United player, no one would even know who he was. And we wouldn't even be thinking about it. Let's 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 not do the same mistakes as we always do and go, big club, he must be good. Let's give him time. He could be a Makeda. He could be a Federico Makeda. He could be the next year, Michael Owen or some crap like that. Brilliant. Yeah. But he could be crap. You have to have a season under your belt before you can start seriously considering this sort of stuff. Absolutely <laughs> maddening. But Danny Drinkwater, though. Yeah, Danny Drinkwater's quality, you know. <laughs> Danny Drinkwater's is a good place to finish on, so yeah. that's a good one this week. Um, Follow us on Twitter, it's at B2Football. And, and there's Facebook. still time left for me on, on this show just to say the words, Jamie Vardy, hope you're having a party. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>